by the grace of God, we will continue our explanation and discussion uh, in the liturgy. We have spoken about saying, For every time you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim my death, confess my resurrection, and remember me till I come back to judge the living and the dead. Then comes the conclusion part of this part, which is, therefore, we also commemorate his holy passion, his resurrection from the dead, his ascension into the heavens, his sitting at your right hand, O Father. And over here, sitting at the right hand of the Father, God does not have a right and a left. God does not has, have a right and a left, and God does not have a seat beside him for someone to sit. But ascended into the heavens, this is by his power. Sat at the right hand, and the right refers to power and might, power and might of God. And sitting means to be confirmed. He was confirmed in his power. But the uh, apostles have chosen certain words that we can comprehend. But that God is not limited to have a left and a right like us. God is unlimited. He does not have a left and a right. But right refers to power and might of the Lord Jesus. Godhead. And sitting means to be confirmed to be confirmed in the power of the we Lord. We also commemorate his holy passion, his resurrection from the dead, his ascension into the heavens, his sitting at your right hand, O Father, and his second coming from the heaven. Awesome and full of glory, we offer unto you your gift from what is yours for everything concerning everything. And, and, everything. and his second coming. His second coming from the heavens, awesome and full of glory. Of course, we are awaiting His second coming to judge the living and the dead, so that we can leave earth and uh, be a permanent resident and citizens of heaven. So we are waiting for Him to come to judge the living and the dead. And because of this, we are offering unto you your gifts from what is yours, for everything concerning everything and in everything. We are offering unto you, O Lord God, you know, the, this bread and this wine as gifts, in order for you, for your Holy Spirit to descend on them in a minute now, as I'm going to praise the prayers, the inaudible prayers, in order for the Holy Spirit to descend on them and change them into the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So everybody worships and says, we praise you, we bless you, we serve you, and we worship you. Then I'm going to call on the Holy Spirit, and this tells us the authority that God has given to the uh, uh, priesthood on earth, that just by uttering certain words, the Holy Spirit listens and descends and changes the bread into body and the wine into blood. That's why the priesthood is not an earthly privilege, it's a heavenly privilege. Because the priesthood is only in heaven. The priesthood is only in heaven as we know about the 24 presbyters who are seated on their golden throne and have the golden crowns on their head and they are worshipping the Lord Jesus at all times. So it is a heavenly privilege and gift. So if God has given it to us, this is way beyond our understanding. This is way beyond of our understanding. And then, I want to press and says, And we ask you, O Lord our God, we your sinful and unworthy servants, of course, because no matter what, you know, we are both sinners, and we are also unworthy as the priest himself is unworthy as a servant to stand for this service. We worship you by the pleasure of your goodness, that that is of your Holy Spirit. Descend upon upon us and upon these gifts, set forth, purify them, change them, and manifest them as a sanctification 
of your sins. So we are asking him to descend and change the bread into his body. And by the same token, we ask him also for the chalice of wine to do the same thing. Now that the bread and the wine are changed or transubstantiated into the body and the blood, now I have Jesus present. As of this time, we are ready to take communion. But the church said, now that I have Jesus on the altar, shouldn't we ask of him as many supplications as possible? Yes, said, let us do that. So we pray for the peace of the one holy Catholic, Catholic Meets Universal Apostolic Church. Lord, our Master, to partake of your holies, to the purification of our soul, our body and spirit, that we may become one body and one spirit, and may have a share in our hurtings with all the saints who have pleased you. Send the beginning. Remember, O oh Lord, the peace of your and all universe and apostolic. Our Church. Pray for the peace of the one holy Catholic and Apostolic Orthodox Church of God. of the church, patriarch, the metropolitans, the bishops, the hegemons, the priests, the deacons, all those who are serving in the priesthood rank. We also pray for uh, all the servants and those who are in virginity and purity and the faithful people so that God may remember us to have mercy upon us all. We also ask him to bless and remember the salvation of this holy place which we are in and all the other places and the monasteries and monasteries the Lord, the salvation of this holy place and every place and every monastery our Orthodox Fathers Pray for the salvation of the world and of this city of ours and of all cities, countries, islands and monasteries And we also ask of him for the faith of all people, and we ask him to graciously bless the waters, the rivers, the herbs of the field this year. And as he blesses that, or as we pray this one, uh, he continues by saying, uh, or supplicating to the Lord and asking to raise them raise them up to their measure according to your grace give joy to the face of the earth and may its furrows be abundantly watered and its fruit fruits be plentiful because of course you know with the population of the world we need god to bless the fruits of the earth and the vegetables and the vegetations in general so that there will be sustenance enough for this great population that is happening around the world. And we also ask him to bless the crown of the year, the beginning of the year, by his goodness, for the sake of the poor, the widow, the orphan, the traveler, the stranger, and for the sake of all of us who will treat him and seek his holy name. For the eyes of everyone wait upon him, as he gave them their food in due season. Anytime we need to pray to God, the first thing is we lift up our eyes and we start praying. We lift also our hearts and start praying to the Lord God that he may give us our needs. And as I said before, when we pray, let's not ask God to give us what we want, but what we need. Because what we need is that much, but what we want is that much. We don't need that much, we just need what we need, not what we want. 
Deal with us according to your goodness, O you who give food to all flesh, fill our hearts with joy and gladness. Our hearts is always filled with joy and gladness as long as we are united with the Lord Jesus. Because He is the source of peace, and He is the source of knowledge, and He is the source of love. And if we have Him, then our hearts are filled with joy and gladness. That we too have in sufficiency in everything, always may abound in every good deed. And of course, as we are having our fulfillment and our sufficiency, then we have to act with good deeds for everyone, for the poor, for the stranger, for the traveler, etc. And we have to have this in mind. Then comes the last part of the supplications in this part, and that is the priest prays for those who have offered these gifts, those on whose behalf they have been offered, and those by whom they are offered. O Lord, those have brought you these gifts, those in whose behalf they have been brought, and those by whom they have been brought. Give them all the heavenly rewards. Pray for these holy and precious gifts, our sacrifices, and those who have brought. Thank you.